Good evening and welcome to this month's last meeting and last special meeting of the Board of Education. Um, just a reference before we go to the Pledge of Allegiance, tonight's meeting is to do the final step in our due diligence on the selection of our superintendent. So before we get started, uh, if we could all stand and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And so as we get started, Mr. Secretary, can you call the roll? Gladly. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky. I'm here. Treasurer Brandstant. Here. Member Gorton. Absent. Member McFarland. Here. Member Vanderkellen. Here. Six to seven. Thank you. And I think Yvonne is coming because she sent me comments on some of her uh, checks. Uh, any requests to address the board at this stage? Okay, seeing none and we have no formal submissions, we'll move on to our agenda. And the first item is to talk about the visiting committee findings on this and I'll refresh uh, the public of what we did. Remember the steps we did? We did a uh, uh, selection of a site of a selection firm. Uh, then we went into a uh, closed session to look at the list of candidates they had and narrow that to five. We interviewed those five, paired it to three, uh, went to the next round of interviews where one of the candidates uh, uh, dropped out and we interviewed two. We then selected one in an open meeting here. And then uh, we uh, formed a delegation of three board members and many members from the community to go down to Algonac School District to see that district and various constituents in that district. Uh, we saw parents, we saw teachers, we saw some that were teachers and parents. We saw administrators, his administrative team. We saw the union leadership in, in their own setting uh, and civic leaders like county commissioners, et cetera, uh, throughout the day. Um, the people on the team that went, and it was in the paper, but I'll, I'll refresh, uh, was Board President Wasserman, Board Vice President Baker, Board Treasurer Brandstadt, uh, Midland High Principal Janet Greif, Jefferson Middle School teacher and Gerstacker winner Kelly Bays, East Lawn parent Cindy Smerden, uh, MCA President Vi Collin, uh, former MPS board member Rick Oley, the Legacy Center Director Jen Hieronima, the HH and, and at the last minute HH Dow uh, Foundation Director Janae Vlasquez could not attend. Uh, so we, we missed her dearly, but we understand the reason. So thank you, Jen, for uh, trying. And the Vice President of Facilities for the Mid-Michigan Med Center and MPS parent Mike Erickson. And several of them are here tonight that will be reporting in that uh, could make it tonight. Um, so that was the team. So the next thing I'd like to, to comment on is to invite team members to the podium that are not board members, one at a time, and give us your views of what you saw in a synopsized form. And uh, I'll let you guys pick straws. Who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> and introduce yourself, please. Can you hear me? Is that better? Okay. Um, thank you very much. My name is Jennifer Hieronima. I'm president and CEO of the Legacy Center here in Midland. And I want to thank Mr. Wasserman for inviting me on this trip. It was um, very enlightening. It was really great to get to meet the new candidate um, and to actually hear from most of the community members uh, about what he's like um, firsthand. And the first thing I can tell you is that he puts kids first. That was very obvious from talking to everyone that you know that was his number one priority is no matter what else happens, no matter what budget cuts they face, kids are always first and the impact on kids is what he thinks about first. Um, he's a great communicator and I think that's something that our new superintendent absolutely must have. There's a lot going on in our community with education and he does a lot of different communications in a lot of different ways. And we asked him a lot of questions about how he would do that when he got here and very satisfied with his responses. Um, we talked to, as Mr. Wasserman said, a lot of different people, and everybody was more or less unanimous on how they felt about him. That he's a man of integrity, he's honest, he's very straightforward, and he'll hear you out. Um, I think what struck me probably most was the response from the union representation in the room. They were all unanimous in there. They like to work with him. He, t he listens to them, their sides. 
of what's going on and responds accordingly. And um, I think that's really great, having those kind of relationships. And I think this community would be very lucky to have him. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, and thanks for making the trip. <coughs> for, for the viewers, our trip started at 6.30 in the morning and ended at 8.30 at night back in the same parking lot. So it was a long day for many people. I'm Cindy Smerden. I'm an East Lawn parent. I have one in school. My oldest is in first grade. I have two younger children, and I was asked by Jerry to be part of this to represent the ongoing interest in the district and the fact that I will be and have kids in the district for the next 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for inviting me along and letting me be that voice in this group. Um, I also was struck with how well liked he was by all the different groups we saw. And what really impressed me is the consistency in the characteristics that they named, which proves to me what a consistent leader he is. He doesn't act one way with unions and one way with teachers and one way with parents. It is very consistent and an open book to his staff and his stakeholders. Um, there were several consistent points throughout the day, repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the one, two that stuck out to me, the first one is that his guidepost in making decisions is that how does it affect the kids? Is it best for the kids? And our job here is to educate children. And that was, all of the groups said that when, whether he was making a decision or helping them make a decision, his question to them was, is it best for the kids? And the second one was, what a great communicator he is. He not only talks well and keeps in touch, but he listens. And I think that we would be very privileged to have him as our leader. And I am excited to see where he takes the district and to see what high school looks like when my kids are there. So thanks again for letting me go. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me here today and also yesterday on the trip. Uh, I appreciated it very much to have the opportunity to have some uh, uh, input and to be able to be exposed to um, uh, our candidate. Hey, Mike. Um, Mike, introduce yourself. Oh, I'm Mike Dirksen. I'm Vice President of Facilities Construction with MidMichigan Health. I'm also a proud parent of four children uh, in the school system here. I have a middle schooler, sixth grade, and a fifth grader, fourth grader, and a second grader. So, three boys and a dog. Give him applause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not me, not me. Um, so, uh, it, um, you know, on behalf of the business uh, aspect as well as the parental aspect, it was a great visit. Um, the, the, key, the key themes I took away, everybody kept talking about his integrity, that it was without question, um, no matter what issue we brought up, and I know you're going to address some of those later, no matter what issue got brought up, his integrity was never a question across the board. And that was, uh, as we mentioned before, parents were there, board members were there, uh, union uh, leaders were there, uh, members and parents across the board, so consistent theme. Uh, compassion was another comp consistent theme uh, across the board, almost to, uh, to a fault. There were a couple folks who were actually in tears to see him leave, um, so it really spoke volumes. Uh, I wish that someday, if uh, and I ever departed an organization, people <laughs> would able to say the things uh, about me that were said about him uh, yesterday, honestly. Um, it was quite humbling. Um, communication skills, weekly updates, open door policies, the state of the school that he was able to give to all the teachers to keep them informed uh, across the board, I think was very impressive. Um, very collaborative, again, including the union leadership that was all represented there yesterday. Uh, really talked about even there are times where difficult situations, difficult problems, they were able to work through things collaboratively, collaboratively, not in an authoritarian or directive manner. Um, kids first. and. Um, Again, they were all very, very sorry to see him late. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Good evening. I'm Janet Greif, the principal at Midland High School. And again, I really appreciate the opportunity to go. And really, I think that everyone pretty much covered everything that you could really say about Mike. It was hard. There was, not, there was nothing negative. But what really caught me at the very end, the board president, again, very emotionally, saying, how, of course, how much he liked Mike and how much he'd miss him. But the interesting thing he said is he said that um, Mike leaves us in good shape and we're going to be okay without him. And everyone knows really the, really the mark of a good leader is that everything that you've worked on, all of your initiatives, is that when you leave, 
that people can carry on without you. I mean, that is really to develop other people. And they really spoke about his mentoring. So I guess for me, that Elginac feels like they'll be okay, though they're very sad, that he's really instilled in them the power and the feeling of confidence that they can go on without him. And I think that is really a sign of a good leader. And I'm very excited for having to come work with us in Midland. Before you step down, could you, yeah. you come back to the podium so the camera can catch you for a minute? <laughs> Um, while you're there, I have a question and a comment. Sure. Did anybody see any reason we should not hire Mr. Shar? No. No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And uh, thank you. And I'd like to uh, have the board join me in thanking you for going. Oh, no problem. It was great. It's great. Thank you. Yes, thank you. At um, this stage, we'll move into the board members who attended its comments. And uh, whichever one of you wants to start first, I'll let your your drivers. <laughs> Go ahead, Lynn. I can start. I don't have a whole lot to add to what um, the four that, that went with us just um, mentioned, but I would re-emphasize how they all talked about, and we all know why we're here, it's for students first. And um, whether it's budgeting, it's programming, and that is the main focus for everyone in that district. And they talk about it with Mike Charles, but he's instilled that with his staff, his parents. They all, f they all together really believe, and I think that helps them get through some of the challenges with budgeting and curriculum because they all understand that they're doing what is best for kids. And I would, I would echo the excellent communication skills and the listening, the open door policy. We did ask you know, how, how he will be able to carry that over in a district that is quite a bit larger. And uh, they, they all felt that he is the kind of man that it will be a new challenge, and he, can, he, he uh, looks forward to those challenges. And uh, he also looks forward to uh, being here. And, and as much as they hate to uh, let him go, they are excited for him because they know this is important at, to him and that he is very, very capable of leading us uh, as we go forward here at Midland Public Schools. We visited the high school and I talked so, to some of the uh, IB diploma students, which is really exciting because for them, they're so proud to have this IB diploma in their tiny little district. And, and the kids were excited about what they're doing and they're getting ready to, um, to uh, receive their, their IB diplomas and, and move on in their lives. And it, they feel that it's been very valuable to have that challenging, uh, rigorous course load for them amongst the, the other curriculum offerings they have. Uh, it was very interesting to chatting with the um, media specialist. She wore several hats, but she talked about, I guess, and I share this because they talk about the open communication and the respect that they all have amongst all their groups. And when she uh, went into the library, became the media specialist and uh, was working in the library, she said, I can't do this. She didn't like the configuration. And she said, this just isn't going to work with the way I teach and, and the way students learn. And went to Mike, and uh, he said, uh, I'll get you the people, wait till summer. And uh, she was able to design her media center so that it fit the, the uh, educational needs of her students and her. And that's just one little, one little example, but how important that she felt confident enough in what, what uh, her needs were and that she knew she could go to Mike. And they all echoed that. They can go to Mike. They, he may not give them the answer they want, but they are willing to discuss it both ways. And when they're done, they have a mutual understanding. Um, and again, they talked about with the difficulties they have with reducing their fund balance and budget and finance, that again, it's those communication skills that helps them all understand. Is they, it's not a surprise. They're, they know what's coming. That he tries to help them understand through all the different communication tools he uses. And uh, it helps things run very smoothly in their district because they, they face many of the same challenges that the rest of us do. So hands down, I think Mr. Sharo is a very good fit for Midland Public School. Thank you. Any questions for Lynn? Angela. All right, well, I'll keep this really short because I think everyone else has pretty much said. Um, first of all, one thing we found out was how many people in their community have watched all the videos of <laughs> all of our meetings. So I want to right now take the opportunity to thank everyone yesterday 
um, down in Algonac who took the time to come and speak to us because I know that was hard for all of them knowing that they can see themselves will be in the same situation hopefully in a couple of days where they are needing to um, look for a new superintendent um, but I'll echo what everyone else said really a lot of the stuff that came through the, the putting kids first the integrity that was very important to me um, communication was such a strong theme throughout the whole day and just what a good communicator he was and all the different ways that he had to communicate um, and then just the ingenuity piece and you know I, I felt through interviewing him how creative he has been but then it did seem like that has cascaded down through his organization and supports that and it sounded like the teachers weren't afraid to be risk takers um, with their own ideas and I thought that that was very important um, knowing that I'm sure we have so many teachers and administrators that also have such fabulous ideas and that he seemed very supportive of all of that. So um, it just seemed like the whole day there were just many common themes um, no matter what type of group that we had and um, I just left there still with a very strong feeling that he is definitely a good fit for our district. Thank you. Um, while I have the two board members that spoke, any of you, uh, I speak to you individually, Angela, any reason not to proceed? No. Lynn? No. Okay. Um, at this point, we'll move on to the board reference comments. Uh, for the public uh, knowledge, uh, we were supplied an additional 18 <coughs> reference checks to our first ones. Uh, and the four board members who did not travel with us to Algonac uh, made those reference checks. And I'll begin with Scott McFarland on reporting in what he found. Okay. Um, the theme is the same. I mean, really, it is. And I didn't expect it to be any different. Um, I will say that budgetary genius. Uh, financial wizard, a couple things that have not been thrown out there yet that uh, a couple folks that I spoke to um, made comment about his ability to manage a budget. Um, everybody just loves Mike. I mean, that's that's the moral of the story in Algonac. Uh, it was bittersweet. Everybody was, uh, they weren't happy to see him go. They didn't want to let him go, but they were happy that he was coming to a great opportunity. Um, I had asked uh, some of the people that I spoke with, was there anything that they wish Mike had done differently during his tenure there? Um, two of them, interestingly, had the same response, and that was they wish uh, Mike had hired them sooner so they could spend more time with him. Um, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. Nobody wished he really did anything uh, far fetching from what he has already accomplished there. Um, and the same thing, he always puts kids first. He's very proactive. He's a firm but fair leader and just a, a get it done kind of guy and, and like the rest of you I think he's going to be a great fit here in Midland. Thank you. John. Okay, I had uh, five references to contact. I did get a hold of three. Um, the first person I talked to was a retired administrator uh, with 42 years of education and uh, is a elementary principal. Um, and uh, one thing she admired about the communication style and how well they work together uh, was he really looked into the concern before answering. He would he would hear that um, and go to the source and be able to have that, uh, gather all the information before making a decision or having an answer, which they really respected. Um, I had asked a question about how uh, uh, the school district benefited most from his leadership, and they had touched on this. This came up in the interview. It's just the regular meetings uh, on a building level. He would sit down with them, have coffee, sit with the, the teachers, administrator in the building, and let them know what's going on. So verbalizing some of that in person they thought was a good attribute. Um, and, and I asked something about could he rally all the stakeholders. And uh, he, he went to the grassroots and he, he sort of built uh, any changes in the district and the innovations from the grassroots up and, and really rallied a lot of the stakeholders. Um, and uh, there was, uh, they felt that he was very fair, easy to work with. Um, they liked his communication style with the superintendent memo once a week. I think you've heard some of that, uh, which was really great to keep everybody on the same page. And there have been things that have come up that have had uh, tough decisions uh, associated with it. And um, they felt that they were handled with integrity, whether it was a, a budget cut or any hard change. You felt like you had that up front, and you, you, it didn't surprise you. Um, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the teachers that I talked to... Um, I'm sorry, one of the, uh, the board members I talked to, apparently a new board member, um, really felt that the, for the size of the district, it was amazing that they could have the quality of the programs that they had um, in Algonac. 
um, involve stakeholders, and uh, I heard that many times based the hard decisions in the district on what's best for the kids. Um, and just a great representative in the community, a very good reputation as far as family, uh, and that he handled uh, criticism under fire very well. So I thought that was a good uh, trait. Um, the last uh, one that I talked to was a, a teacher that was a mentor. Uh, Mr. Shar was, was a mentor for her and uh, stayed in teaching um, and, and made career decisions based off of his ability to inspire her, in particular with the IB program. Um, and does not want to lose touch with Mr. Sharrow because of how, uh, how that's her principal mentor. And uh, the way we left it is that um, by growing Mr. Sharrow and maybe uh, adding on to his experience in this district that he could be a better mentor and they still want to keep in touch. And it was really touching to hear that. And uh, the teacher had felt that uh, that she would want what's best for Mr. Sharrow and that she felt it's okay to, um, uh, with those you care about, to set them free. And uh, so she was very sincere with that. Right. So I had nothing that came up in my questions that uh, would not allow us to proceed with the process of uh, hiring Mr. Sharrow. Okay. Yvonne. Same themes, uh, same things. I, I uh, had an email from, I think, the board president. I talked with a teacher, an administrative assistant, and a high school principal. And they said the same things. He's a man of very high integrity. They talked about what an excellent communicator he is, who's very approachable. Uh, the teacher talked about how he mentors teachers, encourages them to think creatively, and empowers them to make decisions. Um, they talked about what a great leader he is, and they all said the same thing about, well, they also said that he's a very approachable guy, though, and he's very accessible. He spends a lot of time talking to everybody, the um, teachers, the administrators, the students. And then I asked them all how they felt about him leaving, and they all said the same thing. Only one of them used the word bittersweet, but that's the sentiment they all expressed, that he has to do this, this is the best thing for him. The teacher said it would be scary at first to be there without him, but um, they feel like it's the right thing for him to do. Absolutely nothing that would cause me to have second thoughts about it. Not okay. a thing. They obviously think very highly of him. Thank you. <coughs> Kim. And my reference checks did not bring up anything uh, bad about Mike Sharrow. I do think he is a person who can help us work with all stakeholders in the community to create a vision worthy of Midland and put us on a path to financial stability. Here are some excerpts from my reference checks. Mike has great respect for staff and recognizes employee of the month and student of the month. He also recognizes achievements of the students and cares for the students. Uh, Mike's greatest strength is his drive and flexibility and his ability to work with the team. He is always focused on student achievement. Failure is not an option. Uh, let's see. Mike is often kind. Most recently, after our elementary meet scores improved by staying the course, Mike bought Tim Hortons for everyone and thanked everyone for a great <laughs> job. And. Oh, here's another one. Known him for 20 years and have watched him grow. He has a knack for making people better. I have coached with him and taught with him, and now I am an administrator with him. He always takes time for parents, and I have never seen him turn a parent away. He will at least give them five minutes of time to listen and feel valued. One time a single mom came in who was having disciplinary problems with her son, and Mike helped her. Everything is set up well for the next superintendent. There will be nothing that the new superintendent will need to fix. Uh, another reference, I have watched Mike grow over the last 20 years. His greatest strength is his ability to adapt. I told him that that was one of the reasons I liked Mike and uh, was his ability to adapt to change, which is a rare quality. Sam said, if you, oops, <laughs> if you give Mike a mission, he can pull it off. He has the ability to choose the right person with the right talents. If the person says it can't be done, he will tell you that it, you can do it. He is motivated and knows how to motivate others. He also said that when Algonac, Algonac hires a new superintendent, he would want him to be just like Mike. He is a problem solver, and he has a passion for helping the economically disadvantaged. Mike realizes it is the student's place of refuge. It is Mike's philosophy that if we take care of the students and they learn something, we will have done our job. And I asked him about his greatest weakness. He said none I could think of. I would definitely hire him again. And I asked him again also about any time that he knew of Mike Sharrow being kind, and it, that was answered by his passion for those kids that are economically disadvantaged. Thank you. Um, but some of you have already commented, but I'll ask each of you uh, if you saw any reason 
not to hire Mike. Scott? None. Don? None. Ron? None. Kim? Nope. Okay. Um, my comments would reflect everybody else's, so I'm going to talk about a little different subject. Um, we were informed during closed session when the slate was selected that there was a settled lawsuit in the district for wrongful discharge uh, involving Mike Charo in the district. And so as due diligence, we really wanted to dig into that, and we've spent considerable time uh, offline with people and during our visit with, that, with people. Uh, I'll just give a quick synopsis of what it was about so there aren't rumors in the community and what we heard in terms of the validity of claims and uh, how comfortable we are after we were done. Uh, suits from about one to two years ago, it's a wrongful discharge suit where, uh, uh, where the uh, plaintiff alleged that Mike made a verbal guarantee of 10-year employment, which sounds odd on its face. Uh, the play, uh, employee was subsequently laid off uh, as they were consolidating roles. He subsequently sued. Uh, prior to suing, he wore a wire uh, to tape Mike in conversations with over 30 hours of conversations on tape. Uh, the laid off boy, and, and the way it was described to me by lawyer involved and uh, the board president at the time who would listen to every minute of the 30 hour tape is that Mike didn't take the bait and the guy was really baiting him to say things and in one to two rare instances said a swear word. Uh, he said, that'd be the only thing that I asked, what would I cringe about if I heard this tape? And he said, well, that'd be about the only thing I can imagine you would. And he said, Jerry, that wasn't that bad. Um, the board reluctantly settled the suit, and we heard loud and clear, and I heard individually loud and clear, that they did not want to settle. They were holding out like crazy until they figured out it was going to cost them more money not to settle than to settle. And so they reluctantly settled. However, and tellingly, very, very tellingly to me, um, they refused to accept a confidentiality agreement in the settlement. They wanted their community to see the, what they felt were the absurdity of the claims. They wanted everything in the light of day. Uh, they didn't want to look like uh, something bad happened because nothing did, and they wanted the light of day. So this is one of those very, very, very rare settlement agreements that do not have a confidentiality agreement to go with it. So I thought that was very telling. Um, all the members of the community we spoke to and the ones I individually talked to uh, uniformly said, uh, as we, we touched it, Mike said nor did anything untoward or, uh, or malicious or anything that uh, they wouldn't be necessarily uh, embarrassed by, that they, that they were not at all embarrassed by any of his comments. Uh, he said consistently stated that Mike's actions and behaviors were above reproach in all of that and that there was nothing here and felt bad Mike had to go through this and uh, felt bad uh, of how, how that person handled the situation, the other the plaintiff handled the situation. So speaking for the group a little bit, and I'm going to each of you individually speak to it if you care to, it was obvious to us that this suit was meritless. Uh, also, the vast bulk of the community agreed, uh, <coughs> asked every group that came through that question. Uh, so we consider this uh, an absolute non-factor in the selection of money. It, it really has nothing to do with anything, and uh, we hope that uh, puts this to rest at any comment or future rumors in our community about it. Um, that's all I want to say about it. I'd ask the three board members attend, do you have any comment? No, just that, that I mean, well, I guess, yes. <laughs> well, you know, we, we did bring it up to multiple groups. It wasn't that we were just targeting, you know, the administrators who directly work for them or anything. We asked the union group. We asked, you know, all the different groups about it, and I mean, Algonac's very small, and this was very public. Everybody knows about it. It wasn't something that in any way looked like they've been trying to hide it from anyone. Everyone seemed very knowledgeable about it and just emphatically said that there is really nothing to this. So, you know, based on what I saw and what I've seen, I, I do not have any issue Thank with you. that going forward. Thank you. Lynn? No, I would agree. We talked to all of them, and in fact, some of them, you can just tell they're frustrated that two years later it is still being talked about, and they are ready to, they have been ready to move on, and that uh, Mike was, was very professional and handled the situation very well. So no, no red flags. Okay. Attendees. Total, total agreement. <laughs> Mike, I'll let you speak for the group, I think. Is that okay? <laughs> Across the board, again, we spoke with community members, board members, union leaders. The community members, uh, basically the same thing. The 
the gentleman just won't let it go to this day, and the community completely is ready to move on. They uh, had nothing uh, negative to say at all about Mike uh, about the suit or in his handling of any of the uh, interactions with the suit. The board members completely hated even paying a dime <laughs> of this because they felt it was baseless across the board. But again, at some point, you have to have them move on as well, um, get it behind them. And uh, the union leaders uh, were, were pretty much wondering why it took so long uh, you know, for <laughs> the separation to happen um, because it was pretty obvious to everybody that the individual wasn't working out um, uh, with, within the school system. But thank you. No issue. Board members, any questions to board members who did not attend? Any any questions or concerns? I, in my uh, my reference tracks, that this situation was brought up amongst other hard decisions that had to be made in the district, and they said it was handled professionally with integrity, and there was a uh, it was not any question whether um, the decisions were handled appropriately. Great, thank you. I think that's uniform consensus. So. As far as I'm concerned, this is put to rest. And well, and if anything, it was a learning experience. Yes, so. yes, if anything, precisely. Okay, um, moving on from that, I have just a few comments to summarize a bit. Um, one thing I thought was very intriguing with their 50% uh, free and reduced lunch, and we heard all the programs that he did in that arena. We also heard from groups in the community uh, very much how he develops programs for gifted and talented. It was a very much uh, differentiated instruction type of approach. He thought every child had a need for particulars and uh, didn't matter what place you were on the distribution curve of income, uh, you should have the best education possible. Um, I got to see that firsthand. Uh, and Angela, you may not have caught this because you didn't come to the table in time. But when we went to the high school, they were having their theory of knowledge class. And uh, they were doing a little project. And I sat down with the two young female students to see what they were doing, listen to the discussion. And the teacher came up. Oh, I, I think I was were there. Were you there with when that yep, happened? Yep. The teacher came up and used her as exactly. in front of the other student, which I know. Was I felt bad for the other student. Exactly. The other student said, this person is one of our best students. And we have customized our instruction so she can be here. Her parents were looking at other options like Cranbrook Academy, etc. But we were able to differentiate this enough. The parents are totally happy and we really want to keep her. The interesting thing is the other girl, I'm thinking it's going to be embarrassed, but did say, oh yeah, we don't want to lose her. She's great. <laughs> <laughs> and so it just gave me a at-home example without asking and seeing it firsthand that point of differentiation across the curve. And he allowed that uh, high school principal and, uh, and that instructor to differentiate that way to, to enable that to happen. Um, so that, that was my, my big takeaway. And the last thing I'll say before we uh, move into the vote, it was very interesting at the very end, at the beginning of the day, uh, the union president, who I talked about, a little rough around the edges kind of guy. Uh, board president. Board president, I'm sorry, board president, I apologize. Board president. Um, the first thing, question we'd ask the group was for me to say, when Mike comes to Midland, what will you miss? What trait will you miss the most? Union president, or you, board president, jumped out of his chair. Back room, excuse me, excuse me, everyone. Uh, that's not when Mike leaves, that's if Mike leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and that became the joke of the day, of if Mike leaves, if Mike leaves. And that became group after group after group. At the end of the meeting, the, uh, to sum up, uh, the, the, the board president stood up and talked about a lot of things that summed up the day, and he kept saying, if Mike goes to Midland, you will get this, and if Mike goes to Midland, you will get that. And then he did a long pause, and he sat there and went, and when Mike goes to Midland, treat him well. <laughs> and so he passed the baton, it was very touching, and uh, I just wanted to show that to how the community respects him like that, so it was very nice. With that said, uh, we'll move into a motion and a vote uh, to go into contractual negotiations to take the next step, approve him as our final candidate finally, and go into contractual negotiations from here. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve him as our final candidate and to begin contractual negotiations. I support. So moved so, uh, moved by Member McFarland, support by Treasurer Branstad. Any discussion? Any more discussion? Uh, seeing none, we'll move into a, uh, into a uh, roll call vote, if you would please. Yes. President Wasserman. Yes. Vice President Baker? 
Yes. Secretary Kaminsky, yes. Treasurer Brandstamp? Yes. Member Gorton? Yes. Member McFarland? Yes. Member Vanderkellen? Yes. All right. 7 0 vote. Uh, thank you very much for all the people who came tonight and went on the trip. Thank for all the board members for their diligence through this long process. I will be in touch with you each individually as we go through this process uh, in terms of the negotiation, et cetera. That's not a one man show as we go forward. So uh, more to come as, as we proceed. With that, uh, I think we stand. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize vociferously. I need to read some comments because people went through the work to do it. Uh, and I should have did it back when. There are three people to, that could not attend, and I, not their fault tonight, uh, with short notice, et cetera. Uh, so I have comments from, from three people on our touring group uh, to read to you. Uh, this one's from Vi Collin, the president of the MCEA. As a representative of more than 450 educators in middle public schools, I was pleased to be included in the process of visiting Mr. Sherrill's current district in Algonac, Michigan. It was encouraging to hear that he is highly respected by employees and community members alike, and he reported that his leadership has created a culture of open communication and mutual respect. I believe these tra traits will serve as an excellent foundation for the opportunities and challenges that await him at MPS should he be chosen to lead the district. And then Rick Oley, a retired board member. I was very impressed with the heartfelt comments from all the people we talked to in Algonac yesterday. There was obviously a strong consensus from community leaders, school administrators, teachers, union leaders, and parents that Mike Sherrill is a great educational and community leader, someone who leads by example, is very visible and approachable, an excellent communicator and listener, is innovative and creative, and encourages risk taking. He takes great care, uh, uh, cares a great deal about people he works with and the students he serves, and demonstrates and fosters mutual respect, and always makes decisions that are in the best interest of students. The Algonac community really cares about Mike appreciates all that he has done for the district and are incredibly sad for his departure. And then Kelly Bays, uh, Jefferson Middle School teacher. I'm very excited to welcome Mike Sherrill to Middle Public Schools. His strengths include vision, innovation, and excellent communication skills. As a teacher, I'm especially impressed by his State of the District address, wherein he visits each building a couple of times per year to discuss finances and where the district is headed. Teachers in his district really appreciate his forthrightness. Midland teachers will as well. So I think those three comments sum up pretty well what we heard while we were there. So with that, uh, Mr. Sh uh, Ms. Cheryl, welcome aboard, and I'll be contacting you shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody in Algonac, thank you for helping us through this process, and we stand ready to help you if you want anything from us as you go through your process. With that, we'll stand adjourned. Well